Hi. Oh, is that way too loud? Or is that right? This feels okay? Because for me, it feels real bad. <laughs> um, and a pen fell. And also, um, I have already sweat pitted through here. But like, I'm sure you can't see it on the internet. So forget I said that. Um, thanks all for coming. Um, I'm going to just read um, a little bit uh, of a chapter um, called Poodle versus Wolf. Um, and um, quickly, just thank you so much, Julie, and thank you so much, Vanessa, um, and everybody at Refinery29. Okay, a little of Poodle versus Wolf. Um, one late night when I was working at SNL, I wandered out of my office for a break and saw that some random TV in the hallway was tuned to an interview with Angelina Jolie. I think it was with Charlie Rose, who was shamelessly hitting on her. This is great. This is totally comfortable. <laughs> thank you. Um, great. Even better. <laughs> That was, that's what it needed. Um, um, hitting on her as is his want when he interviews a pretty lady. I wandered over to watch, as did Emily, one of the senior writers there at the time, and an all around hilarious and fabulous lady. We both stared at Angelina in awe. Isn't it amazing, Emily asked, that we're the same species she is? It doesn't even feel like we are the same species. I know, I said, and I continued the riff. It's like with dogs. A poodle and a wolf are both technically dogs, but based on appearances, it doesn't make any conceivable sense that they share a common ancestor. We decided that some women are poodles, and some women are wolves. And no matter what a wolf does, like put on makeup or a thong, it will still be a wolf. And no matter what a poodle does, like put on sweatpants, it will always be a poodle. <laughs> Classic poodle-wolf moment. I'm on my way to meet my friend Tracy for breakfast and decide to wear my new dress, which I love, a black dress with white butterflies and pockets from Agnes B, which is a pricey French retail chain that represented the highest echelons of fanciness to me as a kid. I had never gone in ever, but a couple of months earlier, I was drawn in by the butterfly dress, and looking in the mirror, I thought I looked really pretty and girly, like Zoe Deschanel, but from Europe, <laughs> and decided to spend an ungodly amount of cash on this poodle feeling I had. So I enter the subway in my butterfly dress and start to walk slowly to the end of the platform, waiting for men's heads to turn, while I practice saying in my head, take a picture, it'll last longer, <laughs> even though no one is looking. <laughs> and then this other woman walks in right behind me, and everything changes. She is clearly a dancer, or a former dancer, but who cares? Look at her. She has long, perfect legs that are all one tawny color, not a speckled mixture of winter greens and veiny blues like mine are. And she's wearing short jean shorts and a plain denim shirt, and her hair is sloppily piled on top of her head with a cheap clip. She is stunning. You can feel everyone's energy shift as all men on the platform cycle through their quick glance up, glance away thing that they think will keep them from being caught looking. We catch you looking. We always catch you looking. <laughs> I then do the secret embarrassing thing of purposely getting on the same subway car as her so I can keep looking at a pretty person. I am not a lesbian, but looking at her gives me a feeling of pleasure. She is wearing red lipstick and looks basically like Mina Suvari at the exact moment in American Beauty that Kevin Spacey fantasizes about fucking her on a bed of rose petals. <laughs> Hope it's okay to say that. <laughs> Should have asked earlier. This woman is a classic poodle, by which I mean she is effortless. It doesn't matter what she is wearing, as this woman isn't especially stylish. But because she's a poodle, she looks good in anything. She will always look like an ocean breeze, short of donning a Nazi uniform on Halloween. And even then, you'd forgive her just that one time because it's Halloween and she's so pretty. And I mean, she's a good person who didn't mean it. <laughs> when someone is a poodle, you just want to be near her. My own attempt at poodleness suddenly seems like a silly farce, it is, as it is obvious I am a, just a wolf in poodle's clothing. My butterfly Agnes B dress with pockets may as well be a Ziploc bag filled with old shrimp. <laughs> Does this all sound too self-deprecating? Because I don't mean it to be. It's just that I am in awe of poodles, these magical, lovely women who inherently radiate femininity. They are not necessarily the most beautiful women or even the prettiest. They just seem, without trying at all, to always be in sync with their yin quality. That's the girl one, right? Like an iPhone in constant communication with its cloud. If you're still confused about what a poodle is, just think about this. The girl from Ipanema was obviously written about a poodle. No one would ever write that song about a wolf. Famous poodle women. Angelina Jolie, Karen Knightley, Charlize Theron. She's not French. <laughs> Famous wolf women, Helena Bonham Carter, Tina Fey, Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston is actually a very interesting example here. I have friends who think she is a poodle and argue that the reason she is a poodle is that she's beautiful. 
and she is very beautiful. But being beautiful is not what makes you a poodle or a wolf. There are millions of beautiful wolf women out there. It's how much of the beauty feels like work and like maintenance. Aniston is stunning, but I always have the impression that her beauty comes with an enormous price tag. <laughs> Getting your hair to be the color of a sunbeam passing through a lion's mane doesn't come cheap. And yes, in Hollywood, everyone's beauty is expensive, but there are a few ladies who seem like they're keeping very high tabs permanent, permanently open at every groomer in town. And yes, Jennifer would be stunningly beautiful even if she did nothing, but it's the fact that she chooses to do everything <laughs> that tells me she is a wolf. If you look at her high school yearbook picture where she has thick eyebrows and an ever so slightly bigger nose, you can see she felt like a wolf. I'm certain she still feels like one. She'd probably feel like a wolf no matter what happened in her life, because once a wolf, always a wolf, but nothing will really make you feel like a wolf, like your husband leaving you for a poodle. <laughs> I have always clearly been a wolf. I grew up knowing nothing about manicures or pedicures or embellished bras. When I got my period at age 13 on Yom Kippur, <laughs> thank you, my mother gave me that crazy elastic belt thingy that women used in the 50s with a weird pad that had extra fabric at both ends so you could tie it onto plastic clips that dangled from the belt. Most of the readers who would know what I'm talking about here are probably dead. <laughs> my mom is here, I love my mom. But when I, think about, when I think back on it, really, it was unavoidable. We were a wolf family. Poodle characteristics. Poodles are confident. Poodles are always late. Poodles laugh a lot. <laughs> wolf characteristics. Wolves need to eat more than poodles do, <laughs> both larger amounts and more frequently. I often wonder if I could wave a wand and magically transform myself from a wolf to a poodle, would I? Most of me says no, I'm proud of being a wolf. My wolf upbringing is responsible for my personality, for my compassion for the rest of the pack. As a wolf, I am a diamond in the rough. I crack jokes. My whole, li my whole life is about trying, about speaking up in order to be seen, about howling with laughter or howling out how I see the world. But there is another part of me that immediately yells, yes, I would give anything to feel that poodle confidence, to feel comfortable as a woman, like my body is my perfect home, to be the girl from Ipanema and sway down the street emitting an intoxicating hormone, like a female deer spritzing the air from under my perky white tail. <laughs> I'd love to be one of those women who sleeps naked, who never has to buy her own drink, who wears makeup only when she feels like it, who took ballet for years and still carries that motion in her bones, dancing down the street, never a bad angle, completely unselfconscious. Poodle versus wolf, you guys. Um, <laughs> and as a wolf, I am already dripping in sweat. So, but it's perfect. It illustrates the point. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you.